Random encounters were part of even the very first Fallout game. We just completed a half-month-long series on the full story of Fallout 1, and I thought it'd be fun to share with you some of the random encounters I got while shooting footage for that series. I don't claim that this is an exhaustive video of every single random encounter, but I did get a lot of them. One day, while exploring the desert, to the northeast we spot a police box. But as we get closer... Before it vanished upon inspecting it, we learned that it was a police box from the United Kingdom around 1968. And this police box leaves behind a motion sensor. This, of course, is none other than the TARDIS, a wonderful easter egg to classic Doctor Who. We can discover a herd of aimless Brahmin, but there's no rancher here. And our Pip-Boy tells us that we come across a herd of Brahmin, but we feel that there is something wrong. Most of the Brahmins say Moo, but some of them say Moo, I say. Could their ability to speak English be the thing that's wrong? I tried killing them just to see what would happen, but there was nothing on their bodies. And then I felt bad, so I loaded a previous save and went on my way. One day in the dead of night, we find a flying saucer embedded in the desert soil. Just outside, we find two skeletons. And our Pip-Boy says, hey, they're really out there. These skeletons bear a striking resemblance to the alien skeleton we found inside the West Tech Research Facility. I guess then that this encounter is not an Easter egg like the last one and is instead canonical. On the bones of one, we find a fuzzy painting of Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Why the aliens came to get a portrait of Elvis, I'll never know. And on the bones of the other, we find the alien blaster. If we try to inspect the alien ship wreckage, we find a small label that reads, Property of Area 51. Return if found. So Area 51 is real in the Fallout universe. It's a shame we haven't been able to explore it, but then again, we did get Mothership Zeta. I suppose that's better. The Alien Blaster is arguably one of the best weapons in the entire game, and it's exactly what I was looking for with this character. I wanted this character to be an energy weapons character. I had my Turbo Plasma Rifle, which deals between 35 and 70 damage, and has a pretty decent range of 35. The Alien Blaster does superior damage, dealing between 30 and 90 damage. It also has a much greater ammo capacity, 30 rounds compared to the Plasma Rifle's 10, and it consumes a different kind of ammunition, the Small Energy Cell. A pro or a con, depending on your perspective. The major drawback, however, is that its range is only 10. But my favorite thing about it is that it has a completely unique firing and death effect. Each creature in the universe responds differently to being zapped by the alien blaster. One day while exploring, we find a huge footprint. You see a giant footprint in the ground. You search but find no other tracks in the area. What? How could we find a single footprint? In the middle of the footprint is a bloody splot. And we see that this was the remains of a peasant. But on his corpse is a stealth boy? What was a peasant doing with a stealth boy? But I suppose we understand how this dinosaur, I guess, could have stepped on him. He was invisible and the dinosaur didn't see him. But how could there be only one footprint? Did the dinosaur just fall from the sky? hop on one foot, then leap back into the heavens? I think we can consider this one to be another Easter egg, and not a canonical event, though it is repeatable. I stumbled upon it twice. While exploring the desert, we can find Bob's pre-owned car mart. The car mart is surrounded with a bunch of wrecked, ruined pre-war cars, all of which are so destroyed that they're beyond help. We see Bob standing outside his shack. He says, hi, welcome to my previously owned car lot. Which one of these beauties interests you today? We can say, you must be joking. These cars are all wrecks. And he says, but sir, these are fine examples of motor vehicles. They can't be in working condition, we can say. But he says that these cars have been given a full 100 point service by our dedicated service department. 
And where is your service department, we can ask? And he says, right over there. But he points to nothing. We can say, where? There's nothing over there. And he says, what do you mean? They're working on a newly purchased 56 Corvega. An excellent buy, I might add. We can say, you're just insane. And he says, I'm insulted. I don't have to take that from a customer. Have a good day. He says, we can take one for a test drive. And he'll go on coffee breaks. To get inside his shack, we have to pick the lock on the front door, and inside we find a locker on the ground that we also have to pick. Inside the locker is a Red Rider BB gun and 100 BBs. If we're lucky, we find a crate hiding between two big piles of boxes on the eastern side of the shack. Inside the crate, we find a Red Rider limited edition BB gun. The Red Rider BB gun only does between 1 to 3 damage. It has a range of 22, but the Red Rider Limited Edition BB gun does 25 damage with a range of 32, a viable weapon to use earlier in the game, but less than useful later in the game. But it's incredibly rare, and therefore, like the Elvis picture, it's a collector's item. There are a few times where we'll find a random encounter that's just text. These are just to immerse ourselves in the world. We'll appear in an empty field and read that we search for water in the high desert landscape for five hours, but we don't find enough to fully satisfy our thirst. We have sustained a single point of health damage. Or we can find one that says, You nearly fall over some rough terrain. They could use some environmental management out here. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to file a report with the U.S. Forestry Service. We have the opportunity to run across a number of lone wanderers just like ourselves. If we manage to explore all the way to the west coast, we reach the Pacific Ocean. Here, we can bump into a fisherman. He asks us to put our weapon away, and if we do, we can talk with him. And he recognizes us. Aren't you the fellow that wanders the wastes and kicks the monster's butts, he says? We can ask him how the fishing goes, and he says that he has fished in this place for the last five years, and it keeps getting worse and worse. He claims that there's a three-eyed giant catfish named Skunk that keeps scaring everything away from his fishing spot. But he's gonna get that fish, just you wait. It's getting personal between the two of them. Only one of them is gonna walk away, and it's gonna be the fisherman. He says, I'm more serious than the Brotherhood of Steel about this. He is so serious that he now wants us to go away so he can get back to his fishing. And we learn that he has a small boy. They apparently live off of the fish he catches. We can insult him and say, Has anyone ever told you that you ramble on? And he gets hurt, saying that we've made him mad enough to go out and nuke someone. But this fisherman also has some practical uses. If we ask him if he's heard anything about a mutant army, he tells us that he's heard mutants have been harassing the ghouls over by the necropolis. But that was a while ago. But through this guy, we can get the necropolis marked on our map. We can ask him about the Brotherhood. He says he tries to avoid them because their patrols can get pretty nasty, but he marks their location on our map. And we can ask him about the Boneyard. He says that he's heard stories of gangs running amok, and then he marks the location on our map. Sadly, we never learn if he ever finds his three-eyed catfish named Skunk. We can find a peasant herding several Brahmin, but he doesn't say much. And we can stumble upon a lone traveler in the distance. He's a man in studded leather armor with an odd assortment of knickknacks. He stands by his campsite. And he says, greetings, traveler. What brings you this far? We can ask him why he's carrying all that junk. And he says, it's not junk. It's trade goods. We can then ask him his story. And he says, I wander from place to place, making a living with music and a little bit of tinkering work. He mostly does electrical and mechanical tinkering. He helped junk town with their lights and showed people in Shady Sands a better design for their stoves. When we ask him what kind of songs he sings, he says, oh, mostly old folk songs and some Celtic music. It's a change of pace. We then find an option to ask him a very specific question. Would you happen to know Nagyala Imbida, as I think it's called? And I'm probably butchering that. He says, why, certainly. Would you like to hear it? We can say, sure. And then we learn that Patrick sings songs and the two of us reminisce for several hours. We end by feeling invigorated. He only agrees to sing the song if we pass a speech check. If he does sing the song, he permanently increases our charisma by one. We can then ask him for directions. He can give us directions to Shady Sands, Junk Town, The Hub, and the Necropolis, marking all of them on our map. The Fallout Bible tells us that his name is Patrick the Celt. We can stumble upon Patrick any number of times. I found him over and over and over again. 
He appeared so often that I became very tired of seeing poor Patrick. If you want to find him, I usually found him around the necropolis. We can also find a bunch of random dead bodies. Sometimes it's the remains of a woman. We note a partially eaten corpse here, and there's nothing on our inventory. Sometimes we find people crushed by falling rocks. We are nearly crushed by a large boulder in an avalanche. We escape with no damage, but the displaced rock brings with it the remains of a long-dead traveler. This time I found something on the body and managed to walk away with a large backpack. This random encounter is repeatable, and we find different objects on the inventory. This time, I just found some armor and a stim pack. Oh, hello Patrick. Good to see you again. I'll be leaving now. We can find a dead traveler with nothing on his inventory, but next to him, we find some 10mm jacketed hollow point ammunition. And sometimes, we can stumble upon a ragged peasant who screams, Help me! He says, Stranger, you shouldn't be out here. There's only death out here! We learn that he's a man named Trent. He's a guard for the water merchants, but his caravan was attacked by a monster, huge and fast. It ate Joe, and it took rifle shots without a flinch. When we ask him to describe the monster, he says it had huge horns, sick red skin, like something out of a story about demons, and it ate Joe in three gulps. It's big, the size of three men, with claws as long as his forearm. Well, sounds like a death claw to me, but we don't find anything else here. We usually find Trent wandering around near the hub, and if we have a low reputation, we can threaten Trent to hand over his goods. If so, he hands us a knife, a desert eagle, and some 44 ammunition. We can also find merchants under attack from raiders. They scream, we're being attacked, help us, help us. If we defeat the raiders, they say, thanks for helping defend us against these damn drunken raiders. For helping us, your reward is 117 caps. We can loot the bodies and we find a merchant campsite nearby. We can loot it for small items. I found a small bag and a larger bag. And this encounter is repeatable. I was able to do it again and walk away with even more bags. If exploring near the Brotherhood of Steel, we can stumble upon a Brotherhood of Steel patrol. One of the paladins says, hold. If you have not spoken with our captain yet, do so and then go. We can talk with the captain and he says, I recognize you. You've visited the Brotherhood. Some may trust you, but I do not. State your business. We have a number of options. We can say, my business is my own, just as yours belongs to you. But they respond by saying, this is our land. And here, your business is our business. We can say that we've been wandering the wastes for a long time, and we wanted to know if they've gotten any news. He then says that they found a wrecked caravan about a day's journey to the west. They found one survivor who claimed that they were attacked by mutants. They're investigating mutant reports like this, and so far the reports have got them concerned. If we say that we too are looking for the source of the mutant attacks, they say that the only lead they have suggests that the mutants might be near the glow. But they think that not even mutants would would survive the radiation of the glow for that long. Though they would be wrong here, as mutants are immune to radiation. We can say that we are killing desert vermin. Do you disapprove? And he says that it depends on what you consider to be vermin. They will only permit us to travel through their lands if we attack what they consider to be enemies. But if we insult them by saying, up yours, soldier boy, he says that he's going to teach us some manners. With that, he and his entire squad become hostile, and they all wield miniguns. They tear down our companions easily. But if we have power armor and can withstand their assault, they run out of ammo for their miniguns quickly, forcing them to melee, and we can take the rest of them down. Alternatively, if we don't attack them, we can instead refuse to answer their questions and say that we'll only report to their leader. The captain says that that's fair, and he transports us to Lost Hills. This is effectively a way to get transported to the Brotherhood of Steel bunker. A great way to find it if we hadn't found it already. Oh, Patrick again? Come on, man. What are you, following me? We can stumble upon three merchants traveling with their caravans. These are the merchants Lax, Terence, and Jerome. Lax is headed to Aditum, Terence is headed to Junktown, and Jerome is headed to the hub. We can use this random encounter to travel to any of those three places. And this random encounter is repeatable. I found it quite a few times. We can stumble upon guards from the hub. They say, this place smells. And they can have special dialogue depending on the quests we've completed at the hub. They can say, did you hear? The underground has finally been wiped out. Or Decker is dead. 
Watch your back. This isn't a safe place. But they don't offer to take us to the hub. If wandering near Junktown, we can stumble upon Junktown scouts. But we can talk with these guys. They tell us that they're scouts from Junktown on the lookout for raiders and monsters. And they can mark the location of Junktown on our map. And if wandering around near Shady Sands, we can stumble upon a similar encounter. We see a wandering merchant of Asian descent. We learn that his name is Duke, and he's headed to Shady Sands. We can barter with him, but he doesn't have much, some ammunition, stim packs, and money. And we can choose to travel with him. A great way to find Shady Sands if we hadn't found it already. And of course, we can stumble upon a variety of battles. A mob of rad scorpions. And a lone rad scorpion that surprises us. If we get this encounter, we read, Out of nowhere, a rad scorpion suddenly strikes. I'm guessing that this random encounter may be the inspiration for how Bethesda chose to treat rad scorpions in Fallout 4. How they burrow and surprise us from out of nowhere. It's cool to see it happening even in the first Fallout game. We can find mole rats guarding boxes of fruit, as well as groups and a family of mole rats. We can find rad scorpions hovering over human remains. The ground ahead is littered with debris and bodies. It looks like an old battle zone. If we defeat the scorpions, we can loot the bodies for small items like spears, but we do find ammunition on the ground, including 10 millimeter jacketed hollow point. And of course, we can stumble upon raiders. This can get really annoying though, because the default raider sprite is the same as our default companion sprite. For example, there's a default blue jeans and leather jacket raider, which looks exactly like Ian, and they can attack us in a big group like this, so that it's easy to forget which one is Ian. Or we can be attacked by a big mob of raiders that can look like Ian, Tycho, and Katya, which <laughs> it's also just as annoying. We can find a group of raiders which the game describes as skinny hostile humanoids with greenish skin. I think these are ghouls, and we typically find them when wandering around the necropolis. We can stumble upon a mole rat and scorpion battle. We can either jump in and defeat them ourselves, or we can stand to the side and watch them kill each other. Naturally, the scorpions always win. We can wander upon a single floater. These are the creatures that were mutated by FEV from flatworms before the war. We can stumble upon mantises. You are suddenly attacked by a swarm of mantises. I wonder what the lore explanation of this is. In Fallout New Vegas, we know they came from Vault 22, but I guess this means they existed long before then. We can find rats, which are easy and boring. I just walk away. It's common to find them in the mountains or in ruined cities. If the latter, our Pip-Boy says, a large group of rats come scurrying down the streets. And if wandering near the Mariposa military base, we can bump into a pack of centaur. Or a pack of centaur and floaters. Or a patrol of the Master's super mutant army. Complete with centaur, floaters, and super mutants. We can even be attacked by a group of ghoul raiders. Though this one happened when doing a caravan. And we can fight Deathclaw. Though again, this one only happened in a caravan for me. I wasn't able to find it out in the wild. Patrick? No. Go away. Go away. While exploring the world map, we can stop at any square to walk around. There are some places on the map that look like we should be able to find things there. And if we stop on top of them, we see that it says city instead of desert or mountains like we typically see. But if we explore this place, it's just the ruins of a large city. We don't find any loot here, and we don't find any enemies here. Now there was one random encounter I know about that I just couldn't find. While exploring the deserts, we can find a tipped over Nuka-Cola truck, crushed and partially buried in the sand. Here we find crates of Nuka-Cola, and we can find a stash of bottle caps. I sadly never found this one, but it wasn't for lack of trying. I shot hours of footage until I explored the entire world map, visiting every single cell. It's a fascinating world map. Here's what the whole thing looks like. Mountains along the northern border by Vault 13, Shady Sands, and Vault 15. Though the further east we go, the more sandy it gets. Going south along the eastern border, we see more city ruins, but these just lead to the empty city biomes to explore. 
continuing south is just desert as far as the eye can see until we get to the West Tech Research Facility. Here the land is dark and around the glow scarred with what looks like rivers of lava. And here we find the coast. We can travel up the coast where we find more ruins and what appears to be some sort of crater right next to the cathedral in the LA Boneyard. It almost looks like a nuclear detonation site. Perhaps this is where the bomb landed that devastated Los Angeles. There are lots of city ruins along the coast, but these all lead to the same shore biome. Then if we head all the way to the west and follow it all the way to the north, all we find is the Mariposa military base right on the other side of a huge desert. And there you have it. Those are all of the random encounters in Fallout 1 that I was able to find. Did you find random encounters that I didn't include here? If so, let me know in the comments section below. I publish many new videos each and every week here on my channel, so if you want to make sure you don't miss my next episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. They also come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with a brand new video.